Hey guys, today we're going to talk about the eight major benefits from prolonged fasting. Now, prolonged fasting is where you'd go 48, 72 hours or longer, sometimes a week, sometimes 21 days, sometimes even longer. Um, there's some interesting benefits that occur when you do this. The body goes into this survival mode. It's kind of like a physiological vacation for your organs, especially for your digestive system, because every time you eat, you kind of like shut down that system. The people that eat frequently, let's say you're doing three meals plus two snacks, uh, never have a chance to get these amazing benefits. Let's start with number one. You actually regrow your brain cells. Um, not the entire brain, but very specific parts of the brain, including the hippocampus, parts of the brain stem, and other parts as well. So that's really cool. I mean, to re how many of you could use uh, some extra brain cells? So the part of the hippocampus that's regenerated has to do with memory, okay? There's like a relay switch in there that helps you uh, get access to your database, your memory, your file cabinet of memories. So you're able to regrow that structure of the brain to improve memory. That's really, really cool. Okay, number two, increase mitochondria. The mitochondria are the energy factories of the body. So you're gonna find that your energy goes straight through the roof. Incredible amounts of energy when you don't eat. Well, remember, you're burning your fat, so you are eating, you're just not eating dietary uh, calories. Number three, autophagy. This is a condition in your body whereby it recycles old damaged proteins, okay? Um, and other things like microbes and damaged mitochondria. So it's kind of a good self-cleaning action going on. And you recycle these proteins into new proteins to build new tissue. This is the epitome of anti-aging. But in order to get in this, you, you want to do prolonged fasting. Now, I do recommend doing intermittent fasting once a month or once every other month, or even like four times a year would be great. All right, next one is enhanced stem cell production. The stem cell is the cell without a purpose. It's not differentiated into a specific cell yet. It just sits there and until the body says, I need a new cell because this is damaged or it needs to be replaced, and you actually get new cells. As you age, stem cells go down. The more stress you have, the more sugar you eat, or the more frequently you eat, the more it goes down. So when you do prolonged fasting, you actually enhance your stem cell reserve, your pool of stem cells. And this is another reason why you would get younger and you would feel more youthful because you have more replacement. So prolonged fasting is a really amazing repair action. The drugs that promote anti-inflammatory effects basically dominate the market. Most of the money in drugs uh, have to do with anti-inflammatories. Interesting. Rheumatoid arthritis, autoimmune diseases, just pain and inflammation. This tool of prolonged fasting is essential to actually help someone get to the root of why um, they're, they're stuck in inflammation. Uh, a diabetic has a lot of inflammation. So if you have arthritis, bursitis, rheumatoid, um, any of the itises at all, uh, you need to do prolonged fasting. All of the autoimmune diseases involve inflammation. That's why the remedy for autoimmune, whether it's MS, rheumatoid, always involves taking steroids, okay? Like cortisone shots or prednisone. And that's an anti-inflammatory. But the problem is it rebounds and it creates more inflammation and destroys the adrenal gland. So this is a very safe way of reducing your inflammation. And if you have an autoimmune condition, this is essential. You can greatly improve that condition because of the effect on prolonged fasting on the immune system. Number six, decrease tumor growth. So whether you have a polyp, a cyst, a boil, a fibroid, you need to do prolonged fasting to improve that situation. Uh, when you get into uh, fasting, you run your body in ketones and tumors cannot survive with ketones. Cancer lives on sugar. And when we do fasting, we deplete the sugar reserves, your glycogen reserves, and uh, we're running on ketones, okay, and fatty acids. Well, tumors can't live on that, okay? So we starve them off. And also, cancer lives on glucose and L-glutamate. So by doing prolonged fasting, you get to starve cancer as well. So that's another benefit that I didn't mention. Number seven, increase antioxidants. Your body has an antioxidant network, okay? So you have vitamin C, vitamin E, uh, zinc can act as an antioxidant, uh, glutathione, lipoic acid, there's a whole bunch of them. So when you go into fasting, 
your antioxidant levels go way up. Why? Because this is where the body repairs and it defends itself against uh, microbes and things like that. Um, but zinc actually goes up when you do uh, prolonged fasting. And zinc is involved in a lot of enzymes that are antioxidant. Uric acid also goes up. Now you might think that's a bad thing, but uric acid is one of the most powerful antioxidants in the body that your body uses when it's fasting. So it goes up, but then it will come back down too. So it's not a long-term thing. It's just a thing that will spike up just because the body needs that to clean up some of the stuff that it's dealing with. Okay, number eight, cell resistance to stress. So there's been this idea that when you do prolonged fasting, it's very stressful to the adrenals. Well, actually, it's helpful to the adrenals because it increases your stress tolerance. You're no longer running on the ups and downs of sugar. You're basically going into this interesting repair mode where the body starts to increase the resistance to all sorts of stresses. And part of that is the antioxidant level, but part of it's just like if you were on chemo, for example, and doing fasting, your body, your cells would survive better um, because of this fact right here. So the cells become tougher. Okay, it's just kind of the survival mechanism um, that's established from genetically um, because of years of adaptation in the past. Or when our bodies don't eat, it has to survive, so it goes into that certain mode. Now, how do you do prolonged fasting? I would recommend that you let your body tell you how long to fast, especially initially. You want to let your body kind of get used to it. So let's say, for example, the first time you try it, you only go 24 hours and you have to eat. That's fine. Well, give it more time. Maybe next month, start again and maybe go to 36 hours, okay, and then work to 48 hours. Let your body tell you when you need to eat, okay? And I'm not talking about just some small amount of hunger. I'm talking about like, oh my gosh, I feel weak. My blood sugars are crashed. I'm hungry. Well, of course, you're ready to eat, okay? Just eat. But what you'll find when you do fasting is your, your hunger goes away and you feel good mentally and in your digestive system. So if you're feeling great, ride the wave and keep going. Um, the only time I wouldn't recommend uh, fasting in general, intermittent fasting or prolonged fasting, is if you're pregnant, okay, or um, you're breastfeeding. Uh, healthy keto is fine, but not intermittent fasting. And the other situation that I wouldn't recommend prolonged fasting would be if you're very, very thin and you're trying to gain weight, because you're gonna lose some weight on this. So that might be an issue. You can do intermittent fasting, maybe two meals a day, but when you start going more, you're gonna lose a lot of weight. So that's just one, one point about that. But go gradually and let your body tell you how long to go. Um, so many people do this, they just like, they start fasting and they feel great. So they just keep going, 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 as long as they can. They might get up to 72 hours and then they're ready to eat, okay? so. Over time, you can do it longer and longer and longer, but you don't want to force yourself. What you're living off is your, your reserve of nutrients. So I do recommend taking a multivitamin mineral, okay? Um, I do recommend electrolytes and sea salt. I've had people actually pass out by trying to do this too fast because they weren't taking enough sea salt or electrolytes and they just, they, the, uh, the body needed that. So, you know, make sure that you don't omit this. When you actually get done with your fast, you don't want to do this huge meal. You want to go slowly. You want to refeed slowly because it's kind of a shock to the system eating too much. Okay, so go just eat a little bit, wait a little bit, eat a little bit more, gradually ease into it. A really good thing to do when you're fasting is green tea. Naturally decaffeinated would be good. That will really help increase your antioxidant level. And another tea that's great for prolonged fasting would be Hudia gardenia, and that will help suppress appetite. So it just makes it even easier. There's a, there's a product called EDTA. You can find it online. This is a chelator. I like this product because it pulls out heavy metals specifically iron and calcium, especially if you have a lot of calcium deposits and stiffness or kidney stones and a lot of other minerals. But if your iron is too high, you can have a lot of problems with the body. So this is a good chelator to pull the excess free iron out of the body. So if you took this 
let's say you took it twice a week and you just took it in the morning and then the afternoon you took your electrolytes that would be awesome because this does pull out other minerals too so we want to put the ones back in that we want but edta i recommend it uh, to take excess uh, calcium out of your body and excess iron out of the mitochondria which you're going to find that's going to enhance your energy even more it's great for circulation it's good for cardiovascular function and also mitochondrial function. So it's just an extra thing that is very beneficial to take, but you just need to take it like twice a week. You don't have to take it on a regular basis just because it'll, it, you could pull out too many minerals. So there you have it. The eight benefits of prolonged fasting in a nutshell. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, I want to introduce you to my new Dr. Berg app. It's right here. It's, I'm really excited about it. You need to download it. It's free. It has a lot of great data. It has all my videos. It's updated on a regular basis. I also have the audio version of the videos, audio episodes. I also have a mini course that you can take. I also have a button for new content so you can really know of all the, the recent content that I'm downloading. And I also have something called PDF resources, which gives you additional cool little one page uh, PDF documents on all sorts of health things. So download it, check it out and tell me what you think about it. And don't forget to give me a review. It's Dr. Berg app.